the United States, we make nearly 300 million tons of waste every year. About half of that goes straight to the landfill. You and I produce anywhere between five and seven pounds of trash or recycling every day. Once it's picked up on the curb, I actually never think about where it goes. You might not either. Garbage trucks most often take trash from our homes directly to the landfill, but sometimes they go to waste transfer stations to cut down on fuel and distance. Waste transfer stations repack that trash onto semis, then take it to the dump. KNBC has documented some of those semis spilling trash onto highways. That investigation has been credited with less trash and tougher enforcement on Kansas City's roads. Recycling is trucked to transfer stations too, or onto another facility. Recycling has been ingrained in our culture for decades. Kansas City, Missouri rolled out a new recycling program, the goal to cut down on the number of trips to the dump. Unfortunately, that uh, the litter blows across our city. And unfortunately, we've seen too much of that in, in uh, recent years since the pandemic. So I'm really excited about uh, having the littered carts. I've been asked a number of different times, why are we getting recycling bins first and not trash? And it's like, that's very intentional. Uh, the goal was to say, get used to recycling. But the pictures on top of those blue carts make it clear, you cannot recycle everything. Right now, the immediate Kansas City region has two main landfills accepting household trash. The first is Courtney Ridge and Sugar Creek. State leaders say the Sugar Creek landfill could be full in the next seven years. The company operating it says 20 plus. On the other side of the state line, surveys show the Johnson County landfill in Shawnee has roughly 20 years of capacity left. Some of Kansas City's trash is trucked to just past Lawrence or Sedalia. Talks are underway in Sedalia for a new landfill there. Developers also want to bring a new landfill to Kansas City, Missouri, but opinions are fierce over where it should go. Developers have targeted this land along 150 Highway in South Kansas City, about 580 acres for a new landfill site. I feel like all of our concerns, our entire city's concerns, falls on deaf ears. Mackenzie Clark Thomas has been speaking up for months. <laughs> She lives in a neighborhood south of the proposed Kansas City landfill. Thousands of people like Clark Thomas invested in their dream homes, only now to face a harsh reality. I don't want my family to get sick. Clark Thomas and her daughter Macy testified in Jefferson City against the landfill. They said the peace and health of their Raymore neighborhood would be gone if a landfill is built nearby. It's terrifying to think that this landfill that they're gonna run in our backyard is gonna be here. My heart is not to hurt anybody. My heart is always to help people, which is why we are proposing this solution for the region. Developer Jenny Monheiser also testified in front of state lawmakers. She said Kansas City is running out of landfill space and needs a new location. Those in opposition. Monheiser and her team successfully lobbied lawmakers to block legislation that would have stopped the landfill from going in South Kansas City right where she wants it. I will say that my family is millions of dollars into this investment, and we absolutely have been working on this for a while. For months, neighbors, city, and state leaders have tried to ask Monheiser questions. This is our home. It is not right. They've held community meetings. They've protested. We're absolutely devastated. We're afraid. This is our livelihoods, and it's not just about property value, it's the safety of our kids. Now, why is this the best location for a landfill? Monheiser remained silent when she left the Capitol as KNBC Non Investigates tried to get answers in April after multiple requests for an on camera interview after that. I'm hopeful that we can be a solution for the region. Monheiser finally talked to KNBC in September. Has there been any point in this project where you said, I just need to stop. I just can't go any further because of what I'm hearing from the people who live around this land. Um, no, not that I need to stop. I feel like I need to gather those facts and gather that information and let them know um, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Monheiser's team is still studying the land, hoping to close on all the acreage here by this fall. This is part of the buffer area. Okay. Monheiser claims the landfill will not drive down property values or negatively affect schools in the area, and claiming there would be no risk to water or air nearby. It's those people I don't trust. But neighbors like Sarah Thompson strongly disagree. Nobody's saying don't build a landfill, but what we're saying is not 
right here. Thompson has led the fight against the South Kansas City landfill. I built this home in 1994. Rick Myers has too, saying the proposed site is too close. Why here is my question. It's just a shame that uh, their uh, livelihoods are being threatened. Raymore Mayor Chris Turnbow is also fighting against building a landfill close to his city. Leaders in Lee Summit, Peculiar, Pleasant Hill, Lake Winnebago, Belton, and Grandview have all come out against it too, along with several area counties, Missouri U.S. representatives, and local school districts. It would be different if the landfill existed and someone came in to purchase a property around a landfill, but this is, this is totally different. People have invested their life savings. After Missouri lawmakers failed to pass a bill that would have stopped the landfill for good, the community is regrouping. We can't be putting a landfill across the street from an elementary school. Sarah Thompson and her neighbors are now pitching in any extra savings to fund a political action committee. They're planning a stronger fight in Jefferson City. On Interstate 435, going south last month, we saw this semi with debris flying onto the road. Oh my gosh. They're also planning to show lawmakers what KNBC uncovered with those semis spilling trash onto the road. Our investigation found several of those trucks started their trips at a waste transfer facility owned by Jenny Monheiser. Were you disappointed when you saw that trash coming from the back of your contractor's trucks? Yeah. Yeah, we know, you know, like I said before, we desire to help the community and help people, and that obviously isn't helping. She said her crews do clean up in the district around their business. She also said her contractor made changes to their tarps after the investigation. They looked at their tarps and, and saw that there were little spaces that some, some debris could have flown out, and, I, and they fixed that. It's crazy to think that this is going to be our streets. Clark Thomas said she doesn't want any of those trucks or any landfill near her home. That's a concern for all of us. Are they doing what's best for our community? Neighbors in South Kansas City have proposed using those same semi trucks coming from waste transfer stations to haul trash away from Kansas City. The magical wand solution is exactly what Dallas, Chicago, Boston, Baltimore, Denver, every single, every single city out there of our size uses transfer stations to move it to places away from the people, away from the homes, away from the churches, away from the schools. One of the companies supporting that solution is Raptor, another company involved in the recent trash truck investigation. KBC documented small pieces of soft material flying from the back of two of the company's trucks. Brought to light an issue that needed, uh, needed to be solved. The co-owner of Raptor ordered new tarps for his trucks to solve the issue. He also believes his transfer station can safely take trash away from the city, replacing the need for a landfill so close to a populated area. We could handle the waste in this part of the city uh, for the foreseeable future without needing another landfill. Monheiser, who wants to build that South Kansas City landfill, disagrees. It highlighted that, you know, if we have to transport our trash even further away, then the risk of, of windblown debris is even higher, which again, then merits us having a regional solution closer to our cities. Is this site a better solution than the South Kansas City landfill site? Well, we feel like it is. But enter another developer who wants his landfill to serve as a potential solution for Kansas City an hour and a half away. Our highway is littered with trash from one side to the other. What if the people there don't want it either? We're the same type of people here that they are. This is in our backyard.